Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and here let's learn how to make some simple but awesome destruction. So we want to have a wall that when we damage it turns into pieces and it falls apart. This is a great simple way to add some awesome secrets onto your games. We're going to use the third person shooter controller that was made in a previous video in order to shoot at the wall and damage it, and then we're going to apply the same destructibility to some crates and any other objects. Easily design your next game with this video sponsor, Milanote. Milanote is an awesome tool for organizing your projects in freeform virtual boards. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you might have heard me say that I usually tend to design on paper, and the reason is because I can write anywhere and draw some images. It's a much better format than a basic text document, but paper also has its downsides. Well, what Milanote does is it provides exactly that type of format with tons of features to help you design and organize your ideas. So you can place down images, text, checklists, videos, organize them in any way you want, make some arrows, position all the elements in a way that makes sense, organize them into multiple boards, and tons more. You've got as much space as you want to fit any design idea you have, from very small to some massive games. There's also a ton of preset templates for game design, characters, world building, and lots more, really great to get you up and running quickly. Milanote is really easy to use, and they also have a mobile app, so you can easily iterate upon your designs even while you're outside. There's a completely free plan with no time limit, so click the link in the description to try it out and use it for your next project. Okay, so the way we're going to build this is actually quite simple. We just make a normal wall, then we make some sort of health system for it, then we're going to make some wall parts, and when the wall takes enough damage, then it automatically changes from the wall into the wall parts, and using physics we apply some force in order to smash those parts. Then we just make it work with bullets and everything looks great. Okay, so let's do this. Now, first of all, here is my very normal wall. So this wall and this whole demo scene, this is taken from the Polygon Sinti Heist Asset Pack. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. It's a pretty fun pack for making some sort of heist game. Okay, and it's got some really nice walls. Now over here, the first thing that we need is to make some wall parts. And for that, we're going to need to break the model into various pieces. And in order to do that, we can use Unity Pro Builder. This is a super useful tool for doing 3D modeling directly inside of Unity. It's also one of the tools that I cover in my Ultimate Unity Overview course, so go ahead and get it in order to learn about ProBuilder and 40 other tools and features. Now over here with my wall, this is a normal mesh, so this one was probably made in Blender or some 3D program like that. So the first thing I need is to convert it into the ProBuilder format. So I just go into Tools, ProBuilder, open up the ProBuilder window, and over here just select the object and ProBuilderize. Okay, so now I have a ProBuilder mesh. With this, we can now use all the ProBuilder tools to work with this object. And specifically, we can use the ProBuilder tool that I covered in a previous video. It lets us make all kinds of actions with ProBuilder meshes. Specifically, we can use it to cut off parts of a mesh. So I can just make an empty 3D cube. And then on this cube, just position it roughly like that. Let's maybe push it to the side. Put it something like that, right on the corner there. And now by going into Tools, ProBuilder, and open up the Boolean tool, now I can drag the first wall and then my cube and get the intersection of both of them, apply, and yep, over here is my nice corner. Again, go watch that other video if you haven't seen how to use this Boolean tool. This is a super useful tool that is actually surprisingly hidden. Okay, so now all it takes is do the same thing. So just move this into a different position, rotate it differently, and cut it up again, and so on to get all the various parts. Now over here I have a wall where I did exactly that. So I just went through and cut up all kinds of pieces from the wall. So I just did that same process over and over again, slicing everything into a nice bit of randomness. Okay, so with that, now over here I've got two objects. So I've got the normal wall, and then the wall broken apart. Now the wall that is broken apart is made up of multiple objects, so you can see inside this prefab there's all the individual parts. And now the one thing that is very important is to make sure that the pivot is always exactly on the same position. So over there on the wall, the pivot is over there on that corner, and for the wall broken, it is also on that corner. The wall broken will be placed exactly on the same position as the original one, so that's why they need to match. Okay, so now here, just make sure that I add a collider and a rigid body. So first, a mesh collider into all of these parts, make it convex, and then also add a rigid body. So just like this, let's see if all the meshes do have proper collisions. And yep, there's the wall, and yep, they do have proper collisions. And on the third person shooter that I made, that already applies some force, so if I shoot, yep, I can destroy this whole wall. All right. So far, so good. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So we have all the assets that we need. Now let's handle the logic for how to use them. Like I said, we're going to make the wall damageable, but I don't want the wall to be destroyed with a single hit. So let's make the wall have a proper health system. And the first thing we need is just a script. So in new C-sharp script called destructible wall. 
then on the normal wall object when it just attach a script onto it okay now let's open so like i said we're going to need a health system for our wall and as a great thing over here i'm going to reuse the health system that i've made a really long time ago so this was actually made in the very first video on this channel so just private health system make it of type health system and on private void awake just create it so there you go, again, this class was made on the very first video on this channel over three years ago. So this is an excellent example of how you should build nice clean classes that you can then reuse and save some time many years in the future. Okay, so with this we've got a health system. Now for dealing some damage. Over here I have the third person shooter controller that was made in a previous video. And then down here for detecting hits it uses a raycast. So it identifies it sees if it has a rigid body, if so it applies explosion. So over here we can test if the collider contains some other component. Now we could write some code here to make it work specifically by testing for the destructible wall component. But instead let's write some nice clean code. So instead of testing specifically for this destructible wall, let's make it work with a simple damageable interface. So let's just make a new C Sharp script, call it I damageable. And then over here, this one is not a class, but rather it is an interface. And it is not a mono behavior. If you're not familiar with interfaces, I cover them in more detail in another video, so go watch that if you want to learn more. They are super useful for making your code extremely adaptable. Now for the functions, let's just add a void damage function. Going to receive an int for the damage amount. And that's pretty much it. That's the only function we need right now. So now over here, when we do the raycast, let's do the same thing that I did over here for the rigid body, but instead do it for our interface. So for the I damageable interface, So just get that interface and then go and simply call the damage function. Then pass in the damage amount. Let's say I want the wall to be destroyed in three hits, so maybe 33. Okay, so now the third person shooter should already be dealing damage to objects with I damageable. So now all we need to do is go into our destructible wall and over here we extend mono behavior then we implement our interface and let's implement it. And over here on the damage, just go into the health system in order to cause some damage. So just deal damage, pass in the damage amount. And now this health system actually has a bunch of really nice events. Specifically, it's got an event when it dies. So we can subscribe to that. So the health system subscribe to the on dead event. And when the on dead event happens, then let's just destroy this object, this game object, and just do a debug log. Okay, so just like this, let's test and see if we can damage and destroy the wall. All right, so here I am, and there's the wall. One, two, three, four, and there you go, the wall gets destroyed. All right, awesome. So now we just combine this with our wall parts. So on the wall script, let's set a reference to our prefab. And then when we destroy, let's call instantiate. We're going to instantiate the broken wall prefab. Instantiate on this transform position and this transform rotation. Okay, so let's test. So here I am, let's aim and shoot. And there you go, it does destroy the wall and does spawn the wall parts. All right, awesome. And again, just like this, like we saw previously, since the bullets are automatically causing some force onto all these objects, I can already destroy the wall. So it already looks pretty great. But we do want the wall to fall apart pretty much automatically as soon as it's spawned. And we also want to hide that transition with some VFX. So let's do that. Okay, so for the explosion force, after we spawn the walls, we want to apply some explosion force. Now for that, that means that we need to know the position of the explosion. So let's pass it in on our damage function. So let's modify our interface to receive the damage amount. And also a vector 3 for the damage position. And over here, let's do it, vector 3 for the damage position. And then on the third person shooter, let's trigger with that damage. And then the position will be on the raycast hit dot point. So this is the exact point that we hit. Okay, so with that, now let's just store the last damage position. Okay, so we've got the last damage position. Then using this, we can now apply some force. Now to apply the force, we need a reference to some rigid body. So let's cycle through all the children. And then over here we can call add explosion force. And we're going to use the last damage position. 
And let's just also spawn some VFX. So let's make another one. And we're just going to call instantiate spawn the VFX directly on the last damage position. Okay, that's it. Let's test. Okay, so here I am. Aim at the wall and shoot. And yep, there you go. The wall explodes and boom, it falls apart instantly. All right, so we can play around those values a bit more. All right, so here I am. There's the wall. Aim and shoot. Boom. And there you go. All right. So the wall gets destroyed. Now I can go in. All right. Awesome. So with this, we have everything working. Now again, of course, this whole thing can be applied to walls or really just about any object. All right, so I cut up the crate into various parts. So now to make this code more reusable, let's rename the class from being destructible wall to being destructible something. So maybe just destructible object, make this work with anything. And again, since the shooter code already works with the iDamage interface, then we don't need to modify that one because it doesn't dir deal directly with this object. Now we can also expose the health amount. And also expose a float for the explosion force. And then just need to attach the object. So there you go. Attach the crate broken. The same VFX. The health amount max. And let's say I want this one to be destroyed in just one hit. So let's put just 30. And explosion force. Yeah, maybe 200. Let's see. All right, so here there's a nice crate. And as soon as I shoot it, boom, it explodes and goes into all body parts. And the wall as well, boom, explodes, all gone. All right, awesome. All right, so here with a whole bunch of crates in the wall, and as soon as I destroy it, boom, they all fly, they all explode, they all get destroyed, lots of particles, everything flying everywhere. All right, awesome. So you can see how you can use this to add just a bit more life to your games and make some destructible walls in order to hide some secrets. Or really just add a whole bunch of destruction in order to make your whole level feel much more alive. Also, don't forget to check out Melanote with the link in the description. It's free, so check it out and try using it in your next project. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.